Amazon DynamoDB Time to Live is a feature that allows you to automatically manage the expiration of items in a DynamoDB table. It simplifies the process of removing outdated or stale data by enabling you to specify a timestamp attribute in your item indicating when the items should expire. The DynamoDB Time to Live removes the need for manual cleanup of expired items and it helps improve the cost efficiency by deleting unnecessary data and also provides performance improvement as it reduces the number of items processed on the queries and scans on your table. In this video, let's learn how to get started using the time to live attribute on DynamoDB tables, how to enable them, how to add them and how it works under the hood. We will also learn how to use this in queries and some of the things that you need to keep in mind when using this feature. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS CD. Amazon DynamoDB Time to Live, in short, TTL allows you to define a per item timestamp, which determines when an item is no longer needed. So after that specified date timestamp on this specified item, DynamoDB automatically deletes it from your table. TTL is useful if you store items that lose relevance after a specific time. Let's switch over to Visual Studio where I have an existing solution open which is on DynamoDB querying. This is a solution that I started creating in the 5 different ways to query DynamoDB video which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. This is a simple ASP.NET Core web API application which has the weather forecast list items and also a weather forecast controller. So if I double click this you can see different API endpoints inside here. This connects to the DynamoDB using the context and also the DynamoDB client based on the situation that it's using these queries in. So in here, let's go to one of the items, which is the weather forecast table, which has a city name, the date, the temperature C and the summary. Let's see how we can enable time to live on this particular table in DynamoDB. So if I switch over to my AWS console, let's navigate to DynamoDB. Here we have the tables weather forecast table. So let's navigate into that and this has some data inside this as well. So let's see how we can enable time to live on this table, add items and how it affects querying of data. To enable time to live on the table, let's go into the additional settings, scroll down, go to the time to live section and click turn on. Now this prompts you to enter a time to live attribute name, which is the name of the attribute that will store the time to live timestamp. So in this particular case, let's use the attribute name as TTL. So let's click turn on TTL to turn on TTL for this particular table. So now this has turned on time to live on this particular table and it uses the property TTL. Now, since we have added this new property, let's switch over to Visual Studio. Let's add that property in here as well. So let's specify a property. Let's specify this as a long. Now, since some of the items might not have this item, let's specify it as nullable and let's specify the property as TTL. Now, in this case, this is going to get serialized in with T capital. However, since DynamoDB is case sensitive, we need to make sure it gets written into the item with the appropriate case. So let's add a new attribute on this to specify the property name when this is getting serialized. So let's specify DynamoDB property as the attribute and let's specify the name. In this case, this is going to be TTL in all small letters because that is the name that we used on the property name when we enabled time to live. Now once the property is set up, let's navigate into the weather forecast controller. Let's go to one of the post endpoints. So let's use this method to add a new item to this weather forecast table. Now in this case, the TTL value can either be set when we are sending in the item or you can also specify in the server when you're creating the item into the table. Now when specifying the time to live attribute value, you need to keep a few things in mind. The TTL's attributes value must be a timestamp in Unix epoch time format and it should be in seconds. The expiration should not be more than five years in the past. And if that's the case, it will ignore that value. Now it should be a top level number data type. And in our case, we have specified this as property long. Now for any other type of data, this is going to ignore the TTL on that specific property. Now with that said, let's specify the TTL value in seconds in epoch time format. So let's come back to the controller method. Let's specify data.ttl. Let's use the datetime offset.utc now. 
let's add one minute to this so let's use the add minutes and specify one and we can specify the two unix time seconds method this converts this time into the unix epoch format in seconds so once that is said we can write the data and this item will expire in the next minute so let's run this and see this in action now this is an asp.net core application so i can simply run it from my local machine and i have set up the appropriate rights for this aws account that it's running under to connect to dynamodb now if you want to learn how to set up these credentials you can check out my manage credentials video which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below so let's copy this endpoint name let's switch over to the api endpoint swagger definition and let's search for that api endpoint and let's click try it out now we don't need to specify a time to live here because this is going to set in the server so let's specify brisbane let's use the date time as 12 12 the temperature c to be 10 and let's click execute now this would have created a new item in the table so let's switch over to the dynamo db table and let's click explore table items here we have the item that we just added which is brisbane 12 12 so if you scroll right you can see that there is the time to live property set on this particular item so now if i copy this value and let's use the epoch converter to paste this and read this to human date now this in my time zone is at five o'clock and 32 seconds after that so right now this would have expired because right now the time is 5 1. so if i switch back to the dynamo db table and navigate to the table properties so let's go to view table details go to additional settings scroll down and click run preview on time to live you can see the items that's going to expire so let's specify the attribute which is ttl let's paste in the epoch time value that we copied earlier and let's click run preview now this shows the items that would be expired after this specified date time this also shows what the epoch time value is that you are using in here you can also specify different options here which says the items that will expire in the next 60 minutes 24 hours 7 days etc you can also use a custom time and specify an explicit date and time in here now if you have more items inside the table it is going to show a preview of those items but not all the items that's going to expire this is just a subset of all the items that is going to be deleted after this specified date time let's have a look how the dynamodb time to live works under the hood now when enabling time to live on a dynamodb table a per partition scanner background process is automatically started and it continuously evaluates the expiry status of items in the table if it finds items that matches the condition of the formatting that it expects it marks this item to be expired now there is a second background process that scans for expired items and then it deletes them these items are also removed from any local secondary index and global secondary indexes it also raises dynamodb stream events but it is tagged as a system delete operation now one thing to keep in mind is that the time to live typically deletes these expired items only within a few days so you cannot expect the item to be deleted immediately after it is becoming expired which means you could still see these items when you are querying the dynamodb table so if i switch back to the table let's close this and if i navigate back to explore table items and run a query on this table so let's switch to query and let's specify brisbane and let's click run now in this case you can see that there's still the value of brisbane 12 12 which is already expired however this item still shows up in the queries because it is not automatically removed now if you were to run this from your application level that is also going to return the same behavior so if i switch back to my weather forecast controller let's look at one of these queries that queries using the city name so in this case there is a get all for city which passes in a city name and it uses the query async method to get all the items now currently this is using the weather forecast table but i can quickly switch it to use the weather forecast table item and get all the items from there let me also update the response item for this so that this compiles successfully and let's run this and see this in action so let's navigate to city all and let's specify brisbane in here as the city name so let's specify brisbane and click execute now this is going to hit the dynamodb table and return back the data now you can see here this has the item that has already expired so this is the 12 12 1 which is already expired 
TTL. So when querying items from DynamoDB table, be mindful that you might get items that are already expired. Now, if you make an update to these items and shift the time to live property to a new date, that will also be applied on that particular item, which means the item might no longer be deleted. Now, when you're querying these applications, you can explicitly filter it out using filter expressions. Let's see an example of that. Here, I already have a method that uses filter expressions. This is a method that I have written when I was talking about filter expressions in DynamoDB, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now, we can write a very similar method to filter out expired items. So let's create a new controller endpoint method in here. So let me first copy and paste the method, and then I will walk you through it. I have added a new method, city name, low level expressions, TTL, which stands for time to live. And I take in the city name and also an optional time to live attribute. Now, if the time to live attribute is not set, it sets it to the UTC now Unix time seconds property value. Creates a new query request. It specifies the city name to query it on. And it also specifies the filter expression that the time to live attribute either does not exist or the time to live attribute is greater than the value that we have passed in. So we can filter out any values where the time to live is not specified or if the time to live item is in the past. So once we have specified the time to live attribute, I have used the hash time to live to specify the property name. So I'm specifying the explicit property to be used for in the expression attribute names. Now I had to use this because the TTL property is a reserved keyword in DynamoDB. So I cannot pass explicitly here as TTL, just like I have passed the city name in the key condition expression. Now, since this is a keyword, I have to pass the value like this. Now I'm also specifying the time to live attribute value using the colon in here, which is getting passed as the expression attribute values. So I'm specifying colon time to live and the attribute value is TTL string that we just created. Now, once we have created the query request, we'll use the query async to return the data and return it back to the API. So let's run this and see this in action. So let's first create a new item again into the table. So let's go to this endpoint. Let's say, try it out. Let's create a new item. So let's say Sydney. And let's say the temperature is going to be 20. And let's click execute. Now this is going to create a new item inside the database. So now if I come back to this city or method, let's search for Sydney. And let's click execute. Now in here, you can see that there is this item that we just added with the temperature 20 and the time to live is 684. Now this is going to be expired after one minute. So if I copy this value, let's see what this is in human time. So let's go to the epoch converter. Let's paste this in here and click timestamp to human date. So you can see here, this item should be expired after 5.18.04. So now that my local time is past 5.18, so let's switch back to the API. Let's navigate to the new API endpoint with TTL value, and let's specify the city name as Sydney. Let's leave the TTL as blank and click execute. Now this is going to run this application, and it's going to set the TTL value as the date time offset UTC now. After that, it creates the query request, passes in the TTL value, hits the API, and sends back the response. Now, in this particular case, you can see that the item is not returned. Now, this is because this item is already expired and it is getting removed using the filter expression. Now, if I was to copy the actual time to live attribute value from that item, and let's specify it in here. And let's also specify a value one less than that so that it is going to get return back. Now when I click execute, it's going to hit the API endpoint and return back the results. Now in this case, you can see that this item is still returned. This is because the time to live value that we passed in is lower than the value that's specified on this item. Now after some time, this item is going to get automatically removed from DynamoDB, after which you will not get this item anymore in the query by default. However, when setting up time to live on your DynamoDB table, one thing to keep in mind is that whenever you're querying or updating the items, you need to ensure that you are explicitly filtering those items that are already expired. You should not be relying on DynamoDB to immediately delete the item once it's past the expiry. This feature is more to assist you from having to clean up these items in the background in your DynamoDB table. I hope this helps you to understand about the time to live feature in DynamoDB, how to enable it and how to get started using it from your .NET application.
we learned how to add a new item by setting the TTL property and also how to format the value that's required for this property. We also learned how it affects querying of items and how to explicitly filter these items out so that your queries does not return expired items. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit the subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.